Hi guys, it's Mike from FlightSimCoach.com. Today's video will help you to master this knob right here, which is the Barrow knob. The Barrow knob is the outer knob of this two-tiered knob. You can tell that the Barrow knob is the outer knob based on this graphic, which shows that the inner knob, given by this triangle symbol, is going to control the course, which we won't cover in this video today, but the outer knob, which is given by this semicircle symbol, is going to control the barometric pressure. We use the barrow knob to make sure that the altimeter is reading the proper altitude. By twisting the barrow knob, we set the barometric pressure, which is indicated right here in blue, currently 29.92 inches of mercury. This number is also called the altimeter setting. This number is actually really important to set correctly. If you don't, especially if you're flying in the clouds, you're at risk of possibly hitting terrain, another airplane, or violating airspace or air traffic control restrictions. So how do you set the altimeter setting properly? It depends on a few factors. We'll talk through the most realistic way first, and then I'll show you a great trick in Microsoft Flight Simulator to make your life a lot easier if you want to take some shortcuts. If you're at an airport with an operating control tower, then you can get the correct barometric pressure from the ATIS, which is a looped recording of weather and runway information at that airport. If you're using the default Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 air traffic control, then you can simply request the ATIS like this. We'll go to the air traffic control menu, which you can also access through scroll lock. And then we can see here, we're at the Boeing Field Airport in Seattle we can tune Boeing ATIS on 127.75. Okay, so I've hit the number two on my keyboard. Boeing the ATIS is... Okay, there's our key information, altimeter 3008. I'm going to take this ATIS frequency away. I just hit, hit this button here to switch to a different communications frequency. So now we know we need to set 3008 in our altimeter setting. So I'll use the outer knob, and we can see here if we have the correct knob, it shows us, okay, we're in barometric pressure. And just using the scroll wheel on my mouse, I'll set 3008. Now that the altimeter setting is properly set, the altimeter now indicates the field elevation. Before it was showing something that was 100 or so feet below sea level, which is definitely not the case at this airport. Uh, so this is showing the correct field elevation now. So that's one way to know that you set your altimeter setting more or less correctly is if you're on the ground and the altimeter reads the field elevation at this airport. Now, if you're at an airport without an operating control tower, the process is basically the same, except the recording that we're going to listen to now is called something slightly different. So I'll bring up the air traffic control menu again. And this time it's called the automated weather instead of ATIS. So this is what you'll see at an uncontrolled airport. So I'll go ahead and tune this. Kilo Alpha Whiskey Oscar automated weather observation. Aussie altimeter 2992. 2992. So that's what we will go ahead and set in our barometric pressure. 2992. Okay guys, and there is one more scenario that I would like to end with which is the case where you're at an airport without an operating control tower, but they also don't have any automated weather reporting. So here's an example of such an airport. This is the Whiskey 10 airport. And you'll see if I go ahead and open up the air traffic control menu, the only option I have is to tune in this common traffic advisory frequency on 122.9, but there is no way to listen to the weather. So in this case, it's actually quite simple. All we need to do is set the altimeter so that it reads field elevation. So how do we know what the field elevation is at this airport? There's multiple ways to do this, but the one that I prefer is to go to a website such as skyvector.com. So here's skyvector.com. You can go ahead and type in uh, Whiskey 10 to bring up this particular airport, which is the Whidbey Airport. And whenever you see this block of information, the numbers that are in italics on the left of the second line, that is going to be your field elevation in feet. So in this case, the airport is at 271 feet 
above sea level. Back to the simulator, all I have to do now is change my altimeter setting so that the altimeter reads 271 feet. So if I go ahead and decrease the pressure, you can see right there we get 270 feet. And finally, I'd like to show you guys a trick that will make your life a lot easier to avoid having to twist knobs or look up the altimeter setting if you don't want to. I'm going to start by resetting this to an incorrect setting. And then regardless of what setting you're on, if you hit the letter B on your keyboard, what that will do is it will automatically set the altimeter setting to the correct number. So in this case, it's 29. 0.92 inches of mercury and we see the field elevation is, is showing up here roughly 270 feet One more thing guys have you ever wondered if there's a quicker way to learn everything you need to know to be a pilot? Instead of spending a bunch of time watching YouTube tutorials check out my website flightsimcoach.com There you can learn more about my personalized one-on-one -on -one sessions that will help you fly as realistically as possible and turn all this theory into practice I'll be able to point out exactly how to improve your flying and learn real life habits and airmanship. I'll be your on-demand resource to answer any of your questions. Some of my students have joined my simulated private pilot and instrument rating courses and for others I help them jump right into the captain seat of their favorite airliner. If you're a real life student pilot already, I can help you use your simulator to save money and increase your confidence during training. So if that's something which interests you, please visit flightsimcoach.com and get in touch. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.